I'm going to start the recording. Um, we have very few people signed up for this webinar, disappointingly. Oh, I think Dave. we should wait. DJ a little while. We are, we are going to wait for a minute. But, um, hey, there you are. So if you could unmute her, Damien, just. How do we Can pronounce you? your name? Me? Yeah. Jilly. Yeah. Jilly, there you go. Jilly. I was right, you were wrong. I always <laughs> have to say New Zealand, Jilly with a G. <laughs> they think it's, they think I'm Julie. <laughs> <laughs> so it's one nil to Damien. Um <laughs> 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 so we're gonna get cracking and what we'll what we'll do is we'll just um Fiona and I are just gonna have some banter for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> I'll meet you again and then we're going to crack on because uh yeah no the, I, I was um I was just saying actually that you know we, we've had we've had a low turnout for this webinar not turnout but we've had a low sign up rate for this for this webinar and I'm really surprised about that because I thought that I thought that talking about oneness and non-duality was going to really get people's juices flowing oh hold on a minute Turn my phone off. Um, and um, and obviously not. But I'm guaranteeing that this replay is going to attract a bit of attention. <laughs> don't worry, I'm not going to strip. Um, I don't think Fiona is either. Um, no, no <laughs> not in the plans. Not this evening. No, in not in the plan. Fold. That's later. Um, because I, I think we're gonna, I think we're gonna, we're gonna touch upon some really interesting stuff in this. And what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna take those snippets out because I'm, I know they're gonna happen. And we're, we're even gonna talk about this tonight. I know they're gonna happen, and I'm, I'm gonna take the snippets out and I'm gonna put them on social media, and I'm gonna get people watching this as a result. So if you're watching this, you're watching this as a result of seeing something that's going to happen in a bit in the future which has already happened, if that makes sense. Because Einstein said that it's all happened already. It's all, it's all one thing, it's all happened already. And time is just an illusion. Time and separation are in fact an illusion. So we're gonna start precisely there, Fiona, aren't we? We're gonna, we're gonna dive in at the deep end. And I'm gonna ask you, what do you think, or what do you mean by oneness? So hold on, somebody sent us a message. Hi, Damien. I'm not at work, so listening. I'm at work, so listening. Oh, okay, doing... thanks, Dave. Are you operating heavy machinery? I hope <laughs> not, because we're going to be talking about oneness. <laughs> so. If so, do not operate heavy machinery. Um, so, Fiona, what do you think? What would when I say oneness to you, or is Okay, let's 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 make this contextual. Um, when we're talking, when we are talking about oneness from a let's say a three principles point of view, what do you see that as? What do you, what, what does that mean to you? Okay, I think um, a saying that's incredibly popular in the three principles world is "I'm not my thoughts." And I too, you know, used that for a while. I, I thought, oh, that's really interesting. I wonder if I use that phase, you know, um, it's only thought if, if something would happen. And it actually did. Something d did happen, you know. Um, not that I took my thinking that seriously anyway, but I did take my emotions seriously. So that was interesting, seeing how those two were connected. But what, what happened on a deeper level was really um, a notification just popped up. What happened on a deeper level is I, I started to, to ironically think about, so when I know that I'm not my thinking, what, what is there? Because we all have that insight. If we're following the three principles or you've done work with me or Damien or somebody else, you all have the insight at some point that you're not your thinking. So if you know you're not your thinking, then 
what are you? Because most people have been identified with their thoughts their whole entire life. You know, yeah, I can see people already nodding. So what, what are you if you're not your thinking? And to me, the three principles points, points to, this is what Sidney Banks was saying when he said, it's all in the feeling. Forget what's in your head, it's all in the feeling. He was talking about when you realise you're not your thoughts, where is there to go? And where there is to go is, is beyond the thought, is to know that actually when you relax, when you're inside yourself, when you're just being who you are, you're, you're actually, you know there's something else. Why? Because you can feel it. And that's what Sydney Banks was talking about. Mm. So the opposite of oneness, what a lot of people say, is, is ego. And I mean by ego, I mean that I'm limited and I'm separate. If I'm limited and I'm separate, I've got to hide away. I've got to protect myself. and you know, hiding away or protecting myself, that's the stress response. Because when you're in the stress response, you're in your Olympic brain, you're in your animal brain, and no disrespect to animals, because I think they're a load, load more intelligent than what science says. But anyway, when you're in the Olympic brain, which is basically the reptilian brain, you, you are in fight or flight mode. That's the stress response. So, and that's what thought can often lead you to, especially that repetitive sounds like a broken record thought in your head. But we're not. We're oneness, which is unlimited and together. Now, you asked me the same question. Okay, Damien, what do you think oneness means? <laughs> <laughs> so um, I did a session with a client last week, and we were talking about babies and rock climbers. And it came up because we came to the conclusion that babies and rock climbers have a lot in common. To survive innate, they don't actually have a lot of thinking going on. In other words, when you're climbing a rock, the last thing you want to be talking and thinking about is, oh shit, I'm up a rock face. <laughs> and there's this thing called gravity. And actually I'm in danger. And people that do this, adrenaline sports, flow state, you know, peak performance, they always say the same thing. It's like, I was at one with the rock. I was one with the rock. And when we're babies, we're born into the, as, as that state. You know, we have, uh, I mean, admittedly, humans are a little bit backward, which is, you know, when you said the thing about animals, I thought that's great because we are, you know, we basically need nine months of gestation and then another two years of looking after to before we can do anything whereas you know calves come out of, out of the cows and they can walk so we are a little bit limited but we've got a bigger brain because of it you know the evolution has given us a bigger brain uh, to do more when we come out um so but we are basically we have everything we need as a baby uh, and a baby's very clear about what it needs so just look at you know just give me love give me a little bit of you know food and um shelter and, and, I'll, and i'll be good so what happens in between that stage and the ability at any given moment to reconnect with everything around us in a way that completely makes us at one with it? Rock climber. I'm, I'm using rock climber as an example, but we can do this in any moment. We are all capable of literally going beyond our thought in any moment and reconnecting to everything as if we are the same energy because we are the same energy what takes us away from that it's thought it's it's thought which we have something on it's thought which it starts with us when our parents say to us you know don't touch that spider don't touch that socket we put meaning to thought we give thought meaning and thought starts to take on its own life it starts to become its own thing it starts to become not the rudder of the ship, as Sydney Banks said, but it's, well, it is the rudder of the ship, but it guides us, you know, into dodgy waters. So it's thought that 
you know, when, when Sid Bank said it's the missing link, it, it's the connection between the formless and the form, but it's so much more than that. It's become um, the good, the bad, and the ugly for humans. So when we're the climber on the rock face and, and we are at one with the rock, we have that ability in every moment to be at one with everything around us because we are it. That's it. That's the point. There is no separation between that energy. And the baby doesn't know that. And it's funny that you talk about ego because that's what the ego is. It's the self-preservation. It's the, oh shit, I'm separate. It thinks it's separate. So it, it creates this almost like force field around it. And it does that through ego. Um, but that's just create that's illusion as well. That's just self-created. It's self-created through thought. That's my short answer. <laughs> well, I'm glad that we both put quite a lot of emphasis on thought. Because actually, my true understanding of oneness is who's been around babies that are here? Damien, you have because you've got some. <laughs> yeah, I've got too many. <laughs> so, yeah. And, and that's the ones I know about. <laughs> <laughs> the things that, that, the thing that always struck me about babies. Um, so I had a, I, I'm a cranial sacral therapist. That's one of the therapies I do. And I had this woman came in with her older child. She was three or four. And then she was like, Oh wow, actually that's great. Can I bring my baby in? And I was like, yeah, okay. How old is she? She said, well, actually she's here. Cause we was in England. She was wearing this massive coat. She took off her coat and she was usually pregnant. And the baby was due in five days time. And she made an appointment with me in eight days' time. And I was like, oh, my God, I'm going to have a three-year-old baby. Or if it's late, I'm going to have a couple of hours old baby, you know. And what was amazing when that baby came is I just felt it. And, of course, I went about it in my professional way because I was a bit uptight then. And I just understood in that moment that that baby was going to teach me more than I could ever know about anything. I really understood that at a very deep level. And the, the mother's aim for bringing the baby to me was her previous child who, who I was treating was born with a dislocated pelvis. But the medical system didn't know for a couple of months or six months, a long time. And then the poor baby, when she was active, was just strapped down into a bed, put in this device to keep her, her legs in a particular way when they'd reset the pelvis like how traumatizing is that and trauma is probably something we're going to get onto in this webinar so of course she wanted to avoid it by all means with her new new baby so i, I was in wonder of how how one this child was how one this baby was like it it just had no self-reference to it and what i mean by self-reference is it wasn't lying on my table thinking oh here i am you know mrs baby lying on mrs fiona's table about to receive cranial sacral therapy it was just on the table eyes wide open just in the deep wonder of life and i was i was in awe i i was silent but of course i i had a job to do this is what the woman was paying me for so I, I orientated, which just means I put my hands on, on the pelvis and, you know, the life force was there, which is something I really want to talk about. And the baby was doing great. So then I was like, okay, in terms of life force and in terms of fluid and everything you check, the craniosacral rhythms with craniosacral therapy, everything was in order. So then I decided to, to check her out um, physically. Was her legs moving? You know, was her pelvis responding to different movements with the legs? And the baby was fine. But my, my point about this is, is that even if the baby wasn't physically fine, it had not started differentiating itself mm. and making a self-reference. Because that doesn't psychologically happen so psychology books say, because I'm also a psychologist, until we're three. I actually think that's not correct anymore. I actually think that happens earlier, maybe mm. even earlier than one. Why? Because I see a lot of 
youngsters walking around, you know, you know, the one year olds that can walk, and they already seem to have a chip on their shoulder. They already seem to think, this is me and I'm entitled to this and you know and that is conditioning. You know, that that is the society that they've been brought into. But it's good that Damien mentioned babies, and the reason why I've elaborated on this story is because babies totally are in the oneness. They're, they've not developed a separate sense of self. So therefore, of course, they're going to have no thinking about a separate sense of self. But the knowing that they're oneness doesn't come from thought. It's a knowing. It's a knowing in every single cell of their body. It's a knowing before they've been programmed by society, by their parents. Yes, they might have some pre-birth conditioning. And if someone wants to go into that, we go into that. But they're so in awe. They've just been born. Have you ever watched a baby, or, or for that matter, a baby animal? They're so kind of excited that they've got a hand. You know? And, and part of them doesn't even realise that that hand is their hand. They're just like, wow, look at this thing. Oh, wow, look. And they're, they're just fascinated. And if you ever watch the way a baby breathes, it totally breathes in and out of its stomach. It's not got a care in the world. It's just in its body, enjoying being in its body, in the flow of things. So when was the last time that you, were, you did that? I do it on a regular basis. Hey. And how I do that is I, I ground into my body <laughs> and I, I let the, the, the ground, the grounded energy, the life force come into me and I totally fill up my whole body with it. And the way I teach grounding is I teach you to connect with your body first because we are humans and we do relate to this body a lot. Even me, we're all fame. Come on, let's face it, let's just be honest. So you connect with the whole of your body, you connect with the whole of your, your energy within your body, and then you connect deep down to the ground, Mother Earth, as I call her, and then you feel energy coming up. Now that energy exchange is happening all the time, but we don't pay attention to it, like we don't pay attention to oneness. We pay attention to, oh, I'm separate. How am I different? And stories like that. But if, if we just really connect with the ground, we feel that energy, it's undeniable that we are connected. And then when you, when you feel that in your whole body and you connect to spirit, which of course you always are because you are spirit, but again, you just bring your conscious mind to it, then everything just falls into place. And if you don't believe me, you're going to get grounding exercise as a thank you for coming on this webinar and try it yourself and then if you still don't believe me call me up and i'll give you some guidance so i'm going to play devil's advocate here i'm, I'm gonna i'm gonna i know you would <laughs> i'm gonna put a spanner in the works where does your energy field finish and my energy field begin what whereabouts is that that's a great question and there's numerous answers to that to that so the, the real truth is it doesn't. So this is, this is a question I get a lot is, well, what do you mean by real energy, Fiona? And by telling you this, I'm going to ask your question, Damien. What I mean by real energy is when we know we're oneness and we know that on a cellular basis. And yet our own energy is the energy, sorry, is the energy that can be, um, I was going to say negotiated, but that's not the right word. Our, our so-called own energy can be the energy that gets triggered. You know when you're triggered, when you're, ah, when you're making a mountain out of a molecule, you know, when actually all your partner said was, oh, the dishes aren't washed. They didn't mean you need to wash the dishes. They were just commenting that the dishes aren't washed. And, you know, you get all triggered because you think they're telling you what to do. We can all relate to that, can't we? You know, we get triggered. And that's your energy. And that's the energy that's affected by your thoughts, your beliefs, your experiences, everything that's happened in your life, your emotions. 
you know, that's your energy. And it's good to have a relationship with that because as we're humans, while we're human, we're always going to have a relationship with that. But when we're in our real energy, we're always reminded of the fact that we're oneness. So it's actually bringing them together and being that oneness. So in relation to energy fields, Damien, my personal energy field, I can make it as big or as small as I want to. But what's really interesting is when I'm in nature and I'm grounded, and we've probably all had this experience, when you're walking around in nature, who feels good when they're in nature? Yep, everyone, right? And why is that? The reason why you feel you're so good in nature is your own energy just relaxes because there's no need to fight, defend, run away, and you just instantly sink with the energy in nature. We are sinking energy, matching energy all of the time. You know, rapport is one of the things. Personal space is one of the things. You know, when you instantly feel connected with somebody, it's because you're matching energy with them in a good way. When you instantly hate somebody, you're matching energy with them, but in a not so good way. So that's what happens. Your energy field just becomes unimportant because you actually expand into the whole energy field of oneness that you already are. So just taking a step back here, because you know, there might be some people on the call or on the replay that, that either don't know or have, have not heard me or us talk about uh, quantum entanglement. And, you know, I know there's some science geeks that say that, yeah, there are certain criteria for quantum entanglement to take place. But if you, if you look at pretty much any of the data behind it, your quantum entanglement is the fact that you can separate two parts of an electron, you spin one part of the electron, the other part of the electron spins exactly the same time. It has a, it has a knowledge. Um, and you can separate it, but they've separated by thousands of kilometers and it's happening exactly the same time bypassing the speed of light. Um, which is impossible, supposedly. Einstein said it's impossible. And he called it the spooky action at a distance. And the fact that everything was connected once in, in the moment before the Big Bang means that everything has been connected, it has been entangled. So we are, even though it's, you know, 13 and a half billion years later, we are all connected at a cellular level. There is, there is you know, when I do something, even though it's, we, we cannot essentially perceive it, those who are uh, working with energy like yourself, you know, are much better at this. And, you know, shaman are just people, as Jack Pransky said, he said, a shaman is just someone that has a, is a really good listening skills. They just listen to the earth. They listen to the spirit. They listen to everything else. Um, it, it's just that that's happening anyway. You know, when, when hatred happens over here, when death happens over here, um, we can all feel it. We just can't sense it. So that entanglement, that science actually shows that, that that actually occurs. What we're kind of saying here is that the only thing that then takes us away from the actual oneness, the physical oneness, the knowing that we're oneness, is thought. It, it, because we have been conditioned out of it, because we think we're separate. Now, this leads me on nicely to the next cat amongst the pigeons question. Well, actually, because I don't believe it's just thought, Damien. No, okay, but we're, we're it just... Is, it is actually what is resonating inside your cells because of conditioning, because of trauma. Yeah. And conditioning just means what you've been taught and what you've been told to believe by the world. And people will say, yeah, that's just thought. But actually, no, because most of that is unconscious. Your conscious mind hasn't got... Well, hold on a minute, because we're, we're going to go into that in a minute. We, we, we <laughs> yeah, you're just opening up a whole other part of this uh, webinar. So, um, but just before we do that, before we do that, because that, that is kind of where I want to then take this, is just the other part of what we suggested in the title, which is if we are all one, who's paying for my rent? <laughs> okay, because I kind of want to deal with that before we then go on to some really meaty stuff. Um, and what do you think about that question? Well, it's there for a reason. It's there to kind of get people to, to you know, to question it. So, well, hold on a minute. If we are all, if we're all, you know, one, if we're all one, if there is non-duality, then what about this thing called life that we have to deal with on a daily basis? And 
I take it back to whenever I talk about the principles, which is what I'm going to talk about here is not prescriptive, it's descriptive. You know, I don't tell people how to live their lives. I just show them how life works. And that's really important. And um, I'm finding out more about how life works on a daily basis with the work I do and, you know, working with you and working with energy, which is obviously what we're going to talk about in a minute and subconscious, you know, that's, that's all part of the really juicy stuff and what we can do with that. Um, but from a, from a practical point of view, none of what we're talking about is telling you how to live your life. It's just saying that there are alternatives to the one that you think you have. And, and the way I will describe that is that as soon as we have a thought that something is true, we have negated the other infinity minus one thoughts of what's possible. So from a starting point, and you know, you, you and I are both in the same boat here, you know, we're learning about stuff every day. We're learning about new stuff every day. Science is learning about stuff every day. This is the best game in town. This is what we know. This is this is what we're piecing together. This is what uh, you know. Science and spirituality are now kind of literally they're meeting. The two paths are meeting and going. Actually, we're both on the same road here. We're just describing it in different ways. So um, yeah, the question is there is as a bit of a bit of a bit of a carrot to uh, to dangle to basically say to people, you know, it's all very well to talk about non-duality, but how is that going to help me on a day-to-day -day basis? Well. That's the point. I don't know. How is it going to help you? If you have in a second of insight, uh, absolute knowing that energy is infinite, you are infinite, and that you are the infinite potential of the universe in human form, and you have that insight in that second, I ain't going to tell you what to do with that, but I reckon it might feel good. <laughs> I reckon it might feel different. Um, yeah, what's that going to, how does that help you pay your mortgage? I have no idea. This is not prescriptive. So I have an idea <laughs> because I have spent, and this is not an exaggeration people. You can look on my website. Um, you can look on Facebook. So let, let's just talk about the last four and a half years. The last four and a half years, I have dedicated my life to oneness you know i've been really into oneness since i was 16 and you know i'm in my 40s now but for the last four four and a half years i've totally dedicated my life to oneness so what does it look like it looked like i moved to portugal now what's that got to do with dedicating your life to oneness there at the time which was five years ago there was only five people in the world talking about conscious evolution. What does conscious evolution mean? It means what's the next stage of consciousness? How is consciousness evolving? Now, when I first heard that term, I was like, I'm not really that bothered. I've had enough of my psychology, you know. But then I heard uh, Barbara Max Hubbard speak about conscious evolution. And she was talking about something that just blew me away. She was talking about the, you know, I don't even hardly remember now, which is a bit embarrassing. But from what I do remember, she was, what excited me, she was saying that we can evolve, we are evolving, and we evolve by knowing that we're oneness. Mm -hmm. So I moved to Portugal because that was the nearest place that was, was talking about it to, to me in England. And, um, and I stayed for a month with the Awaken Life Project here in Portugal. Now they're dedicated to, to oneness. And then um, I went back to England. I gave up my apartment. Well, I was, I was, yeah, I was living in a, a wooden house. I gave that up. And see, I find it really hard to lie. So that's why I correct myself. So I gave it up and I came to Portugal without any plan because I knew if I had a plan that would that would um, disturb interfere with letting things unfold I really wanted things to unfold because being in oneness is being in the unknown it's allowing yourself to totally open up 
to what's possible. Not what's possible by what your mind tells you or what your physiology tells you, but what is really, really, really possible. And being in this project, I've had numerous um, instances where I've known without a single doubt in my head that we are one. So I could tell you the first one. The first one was I was sitting with a group of women in a women's retreat with my teacher, Cynthia Brampton. And um, that she'd split the groups into, into five. So there was four or five of us in together and, and four or five groups of people. And she just happened to be in my group. And I've got a very curious mind. I, I've studied science, I've studied psychology, I've studied a lot of things. So I, I kept asking questions. And eventually she said to me, now this is Cynthia. She says it with a lot of love, but she says it, Fiona, shut up. Just shut up, get out of your mind, get into your body and just listen. So I was like, okay. So I just listened and my head kept ding, 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 thoughts, questions, ding, ding, ding. And I was like, hold on, just, just listen. And then, you know, we came back to the, the full group. There was 20 or 30 women in this group. And suddenly I, I was connected to everyone and I, I wasn't enmeshed with them, but I was totally connected with them to the point that we didn't feel like separate beings. We felt like one being. And then I thought, hold on, that's just my head labeling that. We wasn't one being. We were oneness. Everything was part of us. Me, the other women, the trees, the grass, the river, everything. Like, honestly, people, there was, there was no way that I felt something stop, me stop, and the other woman begin. Me stop, and the tree begin. Me stop, and the lake begin. And then something happened that was, I remember precisely to this day, I had this thought that I wanted to say something. And I swear, the thought felt like it was a 100 feet away from me. So there I was experiencing in my physiology that I was having a thought, but this thought wasn't in here like it normally is. It was a hundred feet away from me. And I even questioned, was that my thought? Even though I heard my own voice, because we hear our voice when we think, don't we? I'm not just crazy. I know everybody does. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I was just like blown away. And then... I spoke without deciding I was going to speak. And what I said was, we're all one. There is no separation. There is no limitation. We're all one. And my teacher looked at me and smiled. And most of the women did. But a few of the women looked at me like I was pot crazy. But, you know, that experience, like that was four years ago now, that will never leave me. Because it wasn't a glimpse of oneness, it was a knowing. And it didn't last for a couple of seconds. It lasted the whole rest of the retreat and beyond. Mm. So it's not just a glimpse, it's a knowing. And do you have to make a choice to know that? Yes, at first you do. I had to make it every second of every single day. Before I had that experience, that deep experience of oneness, I had to make the choice of it. But now I live my life like that. I know I'm oneness. So what does that mean? It means I don't piss people off. It means I don't try and make a rise out of people. It means a lot of things. But mainly I'm more interested in the connection than I am with what is being said or the way in that is being said. And that, people, is a game changer. You know, friends, family, business. If you're really interested in the connection, in, you know, the connection between you, the, the, the beautiful feeling that's there, it changes everything because people know that you're listening to them and that changes everything. And on a physiological level, it's just reminding us of who we are because this is way this is how we start you know we start with not being separate because we aren't 
and then we come out of the body and we don't feel separate we don't even imagine that we're separate we still think that we're part of of another person um and you know we've come from that infinite potential into the human form so it takes us back to that feeling it takes us back to that knowing you know um dick and bettinger wrote a book called coming home uh, sid banks talks about it a lot you know coming home um and that's that's kind of what we're pointing to obviously i haven't had that experience that you have but that's the feeling that i have had i mean the one i use is when i was driving in the car and it was raining and um i just saw a raindrop fall on uh, it started raining and i saw a raindrop fall onto the the window pane and and in that raindrop i just i just saw everything i just it, it just had i had this like, deep connection with it in that moment split second and i just i just kind of knew that it was all that was me and I was it and you know to have a deep connection with a raindrop it, it it was it's a feeling that you can't explain and you will always remember because it it already is you it already is who we are um and I'm sure everyone here has probably had that experience or a similar experience we've got some questions to get through and uh but I want to before we do that because we're now um we've only got sort of 20 minutes left I want to talk about the other sort of elements here because obviously you work with energy. Um, I work with the principles and, and uh, more recently about changing subconscious programming. And, uh, you know, the work that I've seen that you do, which is incredible, which is, you know, deep energy work is, is what we were kind of just going on to there. Uh, you know, because we are all connected and because we are all that one energy, do you now want to, because we've just kind of done a little bit of a detour there to just kind of talk about the who's paying the rent bit. But now can we spend a little bit more time on, on the energy side, on the, oh, actually on the practical side of it, you know, what, so what, you know, that's a question that, that, I, that comes up a lot. So what? Yeah, great. We're all one. So what? Okay. So you, no one can deny that they have a life force moving through them. And the reason why you can't deny it is because without it, you'd be dead. You know, it's basically what keeps your heart beating, that keeps all your physiology working. Did you know that we have 70 trillion cells in our body? That's a bloody lot, isn't it? You know, and none of those cells go, ah, no, I don't feel like working today. Oh, I'm just going to take a day off, you know that's all right, you know, the stomach taking a day off, the liver will do my job. Well, guess what? It won't because it's not equipped to do its job. There is a lot of cells in the body that can do more than one piece of work. Again, I forget what the science of that is called, but there's certain things where, you know, it, it really can't. So you have these 70 trillion cells in your body and they're all working together as one community. If they didn't, you know, cancer, for example, is when a whole group of cells have gone bizarre. You know, they, they're not listening to their coding. They're not listening to their programming. They're basically doing whatever they want. And, you know, that's, that's cancer. And that's why, you know, parts of people's bodies, their organs or their leg or wherever the cancer is dies. It literally dies. And that's why the doctors want to get in and cut it out, you know, which is a different story. But the point being is they know it's going to die if it stays cancerous. So they, they take it out in the hope that the cancer won't spread in the body. But the, the reason why I mentioned that is because these 70 trillion cells all work as one. They know they're oneness. And they know they're oneness because they have the life force pulsing through them all day, every day. And now, have you had the experience of really being in your life force? What it feels like is you're just excited. You're just lit up with joy. You're just getting on with stuff. You're just doing it. Why? Because it feels bloody amazing. It's a bit like what Damon said in the beginning. You know, feeling in the zone. I'm in the zone. Nothing can stop me. Whatever it is you're doing. And you're just there. Or I know there's people on here that, that have animals and they're very, 
Um, they take a lot of care of their animals, just like I do. And we do that because we feel that connection with them. We feel that oneness with them. So why is all this is important? All of this is important because if you're not feeling the life force, if you're stuck in your head rather than feeling the life force through your body, then you're stuck with your boring old thinking. You're stuck with repeating the same old shit day in and day out. Is that true or is that not true? Mm -hmm. yeah. But if we learn to, to be in our bodies, if we learn how to change our energy, you know, that personal energy that I was talking about, where we can instantly connect with oneness, we can instantly connect with the ground, we can instantly connect with our life force and feel the joy and feel the power of it, then that changes things. That brings your whole life to a whole new phase where you're, you're back like that, that baby staring at your hand. You're back just loving that. You know, you're in the aura life. And that's what working with your energy does. So I had a client today who's um, a 14-year-old boy. And, you know, you've read about him on my website. He's got, he had obsessive compulsive disorder. I treated him once six months ago when he was 13. Just one session, we got rid of the obsessive compulsive disorder. How? We worked totally and utterly with his energy. Didn't mention the principles. Didn't. You know, he's a child. Okay, he's a 13-year-old intelligent boy. But I just said to him, what does it feel like to have OCD? What is that? And he said, it's a monster in my head that never shuts up. I was like, oh, what do you want to do with that monster then? And he said, well, to kill it would be a great idea. I was like, all right, then let's do that. Let's kill it. And he was like, really? I've been seeing a psychologist for years and they never told me I can kill this monster in my head. <laughs> I was like, well, let's try. And as you can see, I can be childlike myself because why not? Let's play with life. So, because all life is, is a game anyway. So there we were. And guess what? By the end of the hour, we'd killed the monster. After that session, he went and had a shower for the first time in six months by himself. To me, that's a result. Mm. What was even more a result is his OCD has never come back. So why was I speaking to him today? I was speaking to him today because the bullying in school has started again. Mm -hmm. And this is what brought him to his OCD. So today, I, I was more interested in, well, what does it mean to you to be bullied? And what happens? And, blah, 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 blah. and when I said to him, but is it really personal? Are they just doing this to you? And he said, no, they do it to other people. I said, right. So is it personal? And he went, no, it can't be. They're doing it to other people. I said, okay, so it's not personal because they're doing it to other people. And um, what was the other thing I said to him? So what are you making it mean? And he said, I'm making it mean nobody loves me. Because that's what kids are like. They're just out with it. They know what they think. They know what they make things mean. And I said to him, oh, that's really interesting. Because you've got a mum and dad that's paid to see me, paid, paid for you to see me. So do you think they care? He's like, yeah. So do you think they love you? He's like, yeah. I'm like, do you think I care about you? Because I've just phoned you and, and I'm not being paid today. But I phoned you because I can feel you're in a not so good way. He said, yeah, yeah, you do, don't you? I was like, right. So do people care about you? Do people love you? And he was like, yeah, of course they do. I was like, great. So what are we going to do about these bullies then? He was like, they don't really matter anyway, do they? That was it, you know. And then I, I said to him, but you're still carrying that energy. Can you feel it? And he said, yeah. He said, well, I'm grounded and I can still feel it. He said, I feel positive, but I can feel the energy around me of the bullies because he didn't go to school today. That's why I phoned him. And I said, so why don't we just clear their energy? He was like, all right then. So I taught him an exercise called Magnet in the Lake. And his feeling at the start of the session was four, five out of 10, 10 being brilliant. Before the exercise, energy exercise, his feeling was six out of 10. At the end of the session after exercise, 
his energy was 10 out of 10. And he loves it when I say, awesome. And that was it. It was awesome. So what's the point of all the oneness? Oneness is knowing that, that nothing means anything. Nothing's personal. And when you know that, when you really know that, life takes on a different meaning and doing the energy work and experiencing that experiencing that you're not other people's energies that you're not your unconscious thinking because energy work in my opinion is the quickest way to delete the programming in the unconscious mind and to stand in your real energy and decide what you want to create in your life mm, i love that and you know having seen it firsthand obviously it's just and it's incredibly powerful as well really really powerful and that actually brings us on nicely to uh first of our questions um which is uh what do you think about the secret law of attraction um and i'm actually going to go first on this because uh as, I'm glad. <laughs> as, as some of you know I, uh, I i launched a new product yesterday um based on um, the billionaire andres pira and his book homeless to billionaire and I listened to a, um, a conversation that, uh, that he did with the Mind Valley guy, and he was talking about um, how he, he just started small, and and I've noticed that it's like people when they start with this stuff they because basically you know we're talking about it's it's descriptive not prescriptive, but thought is creational right everything you see around you wherever you are it started as a thought my like thoughts become things. OK, so our, our ability to create stuff happens with thought. Thought is the conduit for for inspiration, for enthusiasm, for confidence, for love, for peace. It's, it's, it's the conduit for everything, but it's also the conduit for creation. So why wouldn't we use that if we're co-creators in the experience, which I firmly believe we are because we are not separate. Therefore, we are part of that which created us. Why not be co-creators in the experience? So the law of attraction makes a hell of a lot of sense to me, because if you basically focus on something and you believe it, guess what? It's going to come into your reality. It just makes sense. And so why not use that? And, and for me, it, it was a system that is a really simple system, which if you just think about something enough and you feel it, you embody it, you actually experience what it feels like to actually be in that, what, what, we, what we've just talked about, to actually feel it physiologically, guess what? Your body can't tell the difference between the imagined reality and the experienced reality because it's feeling it. You know, if we feel love, we know what love feels like. We can imagine love. So... Why not do that? Why not co-create? Why not sit down and actually spend some time thinking, well, what would I like to create? Now, when people start this process, they start with really big things. So they go, oh, I want this. And it's also stuff they don't really give a shit about as well. So it's, like, oh, I really want a Maserati. Well, do you really? You know, you're going to have like limiters on those in, in a couple of years' time. So you're not going to be able to drive it more than 30 miles an hour anyway. Um, so <laughs> in the UK. Um, so, you know, why don't you have something which you really want? Okay, so, you know, why don't you want like, uh, you know, a, a to spend some quality time with your child and for them to look into your eyes and, and just know what love is well that's something that's really sort of easy to do which we don't do because we spend all our time on these things well so my, my my purpose on that my point on that was to start small and there was this guy saying exactly that he just went oh yeah he just said just start small he started with a cup of coffee and then he went on to lunch and then he did some other bits and it was like oh actually if you do focus on this and experience it and embody it guess what it comes to you because all we're doing is we're, we're realigning energy and we're doing it with our thoughts and what you do, Fiona, is you do exactly the same thing, but you do it in a much bigger and much, well, not bigger way, but, but in, in, in a different way, I guess. So we, we really, and this is what I love about doing these things with you. So we do similar things, but we do them in very different ways. Mine is kind of like, oh, come on, let's play with this and have fun with it. And, ah, and, um, and, and you're much more kind of like grounded. No, come on, let's just clear that energy. Get rid of that. <laughs> no, like, oh, I want to take it out and hammer things with it. <laughs> <laughs> so that was my answer to that one do you have one for that one <laughs> i do so the law of attraction is exactly what you just spoke about damien what you actually spoke about was what's the secret behind the secret so the law of attraction was was taken from Abraham hicks he was the inventor of the law of attraction and i said inventor like that because it was I don't know if anyone believes this, but we're oneness, right? So we get downloads all the time. Have you ever experienced a thought and you're just like, well, you're really excited. And then, you know, this little voice comes into your head and says, oh shit, I can't do that. Like that, that's beyond me, that is. But 
but but a minute ago you were really a second ago you were really excited about this thought that popped into your head we're oneness it's called collective consciousness you know we're all one so he got this downloaded collective consciousness downloaded into him and he, he started you know writing books about it i think a lot of them were free and a lot of them was really really thick so i did not read them um but i've read some of his thinner books and you know then that he got made into this massive produced thing called the law of attraction but they were purposely leaving out the fact that you need to feel it mm -hmm. and more than that they were purposely leaving out the fact that you have to have the emotion of it mm -hmm. Why do you have to have the emotion of it? Because the emotion points to directly what your unconscious mind thinks. Mm -hmm. So your emotion is energy in action. You can feel love as much as you want. You can feel love for the perfect ideal partner as much as you want. But unless you really have a feeling inside of every single cell in your body that you know what that's going to feel like for you and you know it, you know it like you know the back of your hand. It's not going to happen. Mm. So you've got to really, really feel it. And again, that's where the energy work comes in. If you've never experienced that, then you're going to have a program saying it's um, impossible. If you grew up with two parents that beat each other up, you're going to grow up thinking that love is harmful. If you was abused as a child, you're not going to risk being in love because love hurts. And it doesn't matter how much you want to create the ideal partner in your life, you're not going to create it because you have this unconscious programming that's telling you it's dangerous. Yeah. And, and we, we have to survive. So just, just one more thing. So it's really important to work with the unconscious mind. And when you work with energy, it is, it is painful. It, playful. it just depends who I'm working with and, and, and what's happening, you know. I used to laugh at, at people's energies and uh, because it, energy is funny, you know, it, it is. It has this tangible excitement about it, even if it's so-called bad energy. But then I realized that, you know, this was, 12 years ago when I was younger, it upset people. And then there was no way of working with their unconscious mind then because they were in this emotional state of being upset. They was upset with me. So I couldn't help them change. So I had, I had to kind of change what I was doing with them. But it's really important. If, if you know how it feels and you can bring in the emotion of it and then you just ride that emotion to, to its top peak, the emotion naturally falls away. That's how it works. But when you ride to the, to the top peak, the feeling gets embodied in every single cell of your body. And then you let it go. And that's how it's created. Mm. I love that. And, and, you know, thank you for going into that in a bit more detail. It's just so simple when we start to actually work with this stuff. I mean, I, I've noticed this, you know, through doing the comedy stuff and through working with you and then through, you know, working with people with their subconscious and doing subliminal reprogramming, which is really interesting and working with music as well. You know, music is a really good example of, you know, you get people like excited about stuff by, by playing certain types of music and then you feel the energy, you feel the emotion. And just to be able to, to that we, for whatever reason, have been downloaded into the the ferrari of of evolution you know we are all ferraris of evolution we are the uh, you know sorry if you don't like ferraris but you know the, from we're on the pinnacle of change we are the absolute like you know i mean okay maybe dolphins are pretty you know good too but you know we're <laughs> pretty amazing oh, i'd say the most intelligent species on the earth especially in water yeah they're pretty good um <laughs> <laughs> you know we, we've been given this ability to like build space rockets that fly to the moon and mars you know and and create things which we don't need but are fun <laughs> i mean this is the point we can do stuff with our thought and with our bodies and with our emotions and with our friends and with communities like this you know what we're doing right now with these computers I mean, it's just amazing what we can do 
and, and we're just touching the tip of the iceberg with what we're capable of. And, you know, through the use of exponential technology and through your understanding that the spiritual and the scientific are literally two paths that are meeting right now in our lifetime. I mean, how cool is that? So, um, and we've only got literally a couple of minutes left, unfortunately, because we've got some, some questions as well, but... Um, but does anyone on here have a question? Yeah, that's a good one. Because you, you showed up, so that's important. So yeah, if you have a question, stars. physically yeah. put your hand up, unless you're Dave, and then Dave, you're going to have to put in the chat or something. If, does if anyone that... have a question? Come okay. On. <laughs> that, right, we're, 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 we're going to have to wrap up then and um but i'd just like to say before we go um that this this hour has flown by very very fast yeah um fiona thank you very much for for joining me today it wasn't as controversial as i thought it was going to be actually we, we tend to agree on loads of stuff we just use different language um well and apart from the fact that i'm very dedicated to wonders in my life it is the main thing in my life yeah yeah, you know what? I mean, I, I'm not saying I'm not dedicated to oneness. I question everything. I mean, my point is that I'm, I'm, I'm a disruptor. I like to get in there and, you know, poke the bear, as I like to say on the, on the what, the, what the F group, uh, Amir. Um, you know, I like, to, I like to question things. I don't just like to take things, you know, blindly. And, um, but I know, I know that we're all one energy. And I know that we're all connected. And it just makes sense. And, and the moments when my thinking drops away and I really experience that a, a beautiful moment. Um, anyway, so we just want to quickly say that we're doing a retreat in Portugal in June and um, Fiona and I are going to spend uh, three and a half, four days talking about this stuff, going deeper into it. We're going to be doing a lot of energy work. Um, I was there in Cape Verde when, when Fiona was doing her exercises with inc just some incredible shifts that people had. I mean, just like miraculous stuff. Um, and it's one of the reasons why I love working with Fiona and um, we're going to just we'll share the invite to the um, uh, to the page with everyone here and just like to say that you know we'd love you to, guys to join us there's still spaces available hey there we go so Fiona just shared the link In um, chat. And, and I'll share it again um, and we will probably be doing more webinars on the basis that we just like to hang out and we like you guys to come out and hang out, hang out with us. And if there is anyone that has any questions based on uh, maybe even seeing the replay of this, then please fire them at us because, you know, we just like talking about this stuff and we like to, we like to learn. That's the other thing. We like to move forward and we like to learn. We like to learn from you guys. We learn from our clients. I mean, that is absolutely the crucial thing. Uh, you know, you said it at the beginning about the baby. It's like I learn so much from my clients every day um you know they say something and it just sparks an insight and i go whoa i've never seen it like that before that's so cool so um Fiona, uh, wrapping up yeah the other the other um proof if you like that we're oneness so we're not when you know we're not connected we are one so is there at this moment six people on this webinar yes you know that is in one way a reality but there's not six, meaning that we're all one. So the point of me saying this is when you change your energy, it changes the energy of your children. If you have children, it changes the energy of the people around you. It changes the energy of everyone that went before you and it changes the energy of everyone that's going to come after you. Now, this is true if it's been proven by quantum physics. So if you're not going to do this for yourself, do it for everyone else because we're oneness anyway. So you're going to be affected. I love it. What a great line to finish yeah. on as well. Great stuff. Thanks everyone for showing up. You guys are rock stars. We love you. And thanks Fiona. Once again, you're a rock star. I love you more. <laughs> Thank you, Damien. Take care everyone. And Take by care. all means, email us and let us know if you have any questions. Speak to you soon guys. Bye. Bye.